This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this isometric maze icon using Inkscape. So I'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. In order to do that, I'm going to go to File and Document Properties. I'm going to set the display units to pixels, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border and close out of that. And then we'll go to View. We want to make sure we have custom selected and then we'll go to zoom and we'll zoom in at one to one. And then what I want to do is open up the edit objects, colors, gradients and stroke menu with that button right there. And then we'll be good to get started. So the first thing I want to create is a square. So I'm going to come over here to the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And once we've done that, as you can see here, I've made it pretty small. So once we've done that, I'm going to go to Path, Object to Path, and then I'm going to take the opacity, and I'm going to bring that down about in half. And what I'm going to do now is up here where it says Snap to Smooth Nodes, I'm going to turn that on. Uh, I, want, I want actually both of these turned on right here where it says Snap Cusp Nodes. We want that turned on, and then this one turned on as well, Snap Smooth Nodes. And if you're... In, if you're unable to turn these on, you may have to turn this icon on first. Or you, and if you have that turned on, you may have to turn this one on as well. And once we have that set, what I want to do now is I want to create 400 copies of this square, and I want it to be in rows of 20 by 20. So to do that, instead of manually duplicating them over and over again, I'm going to use the cloning feature within Inkscape. So I'll go to Edit, Clone, and Create Tiled Clones. And up here, we're going to want symmetry selected in this tab, simple translation. And I want to have this option selected right here that says rows and columns. I'm going to set that to 20 by 20. So just go ahead and manually type that in 20 by 20. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and click Create. And it's going to create a whole bunch of copies of that square. So let me close out of that. Let me shift this over so you can see what we're working with here. Just to move the page around, I'm just holding Control and moving around the mouse. Uh, like that. Hold, uh, clicking down the mouse wheel and moving around the mouse. Once we've done that, I'm just going to grab this select tool. I'm going to click and drag over all of this. You may have to zoom out a little bit in order to do that. I'm just going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a couple of times to zoom in and out so you can see what I'm saying here. Once we have all of that selected, what we want to do now is go to Edit, uh, Clone, and select Unlink Clone. And it's going to take a minute or so for, the, for that to process, so just go ahead and uh, give that a minute. Okay, so mine's done processing. What that does is, let me click off of that to deselect everything. What that does is that creates um, an actual separate path out of every individual square here. Because before it was linked together to this one square right here. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to go through, I'm going to hold shift and click on these squares to create to, to grab a row of them and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And that should give you an idea of how I'm going to approach the actual maze shape. I'm just going to go ahead and delete a path out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some more of these shapes. Press delete. I'll maybe come over here. Delete some of these. Press delete. Come over here and do this again. I'll come down here. And you're just going to want to do this in like a very random, sporadic sort of way. Press delete. And if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm making sure that the pathway is one unit in size. It's one actual square in size. We don't want to clear out too many shapes for the path. Now we want to ideally keep the walls of the maze. We want to keep that the same width as well in an ideal world. but. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. So let me just go through here and delete some more of these. So you can see what I'm saying. Maybe I'll come down here, delete some more. Come over here and delete that out. And then I'll come up here, and delete some more of these shapes. 
And you should pretty much get the idea of, of uh, where I'm going with this. Now, one thing I want to point out is that it doesn't have to be an actual maze that you have to go through and follow as if it were a puzzle that the end user was following along with. What we're creating here is just a design. It's just, uh, it just has to eth uh, aesthetically look like a maze. It doesn't have to actually be a puzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some more of these out. Again, not worrying about it being an actual maze that the user has to follow along with. Delete that out. And again, to, to select multiple copies of these squares, I'm just holding down the shift key while I do this and delete that out. So that should pretty much give you the idea of where I'm going with this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up deleting out these squares here and I'll speed this up and I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see here, I finished up creating my uh, maze shape by deleting out squares. And like I mentioned earlier, you're going to want to make the pathway be sized at one unit. And ideally, the walls would be sized at one unit as well. But as you can see here, these walls right here, they're two units in size. And um, which, you know, it, it isn't ideal, but it's good enough. It still looks like a maze. It still looks pretty consistent and balanced in my opinion. So what we're going to do now is... Uh, I'm going to click and drag over all of this, and I'm going to unify it all together by going to Path, Union. And I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and just scale this down to like a good medium size like that. And then, when I, then I want to rotate this around. So I'm going to click on this again to get the rotation handles, and I'm going to hold Control on the keyboard and grab this corner arrow and just rotate this counterclockwise until the corners are going vertically and horizontally like that there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start coloring this in. So I'm going to take the opacity of this and bring this all the way up to 100%. And I'm going to make this a deep shade of red, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this by right clicking on it and going to duplicate. And I'll make this one a really light shade of red, maybe something like that. And let me zoom in on this area right here. I'm going to take this duplicate copy and just bring this up until it snaps, till this bottom corner snaps into this corner right here so that they're stacked next to each other like that. And I may want to add a little bit more color to this so you can see it better on your screen. Okay, that right there is pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is the next step is a little tricky. It takes a bit of imagination to, to, to visualize what, where we're going with this, but it's not that difficult to figure it out. You should be able to get the hang of it pretty quickly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect all of the corners together. I'm going to create shapes that connect all of the corners together to create the illusion of depth, like three dimensions. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen over here. The keyboard shortcut for that is B. And I'm going to connect... I'm going to create a shape connecting these four corners together right there, like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the dropper tool and I'm going to make that the same color that the uh, dark red is. Now let me do that again. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen. I'm going to create another shape connecting these corners together down here. I'm going to grab the dropper tool and I'm going to make that the same shade this color is right here. And that fills in the gaps between the corners like that. Now the thing is, we're going to use another color. We're not going to just stick to these two shades here. All of the shapes that are going in this direction, where they start out at the left and go downward to the right, I'm going to color in all of those shapes with this dark red. The shapes that go the opposite way, where they start out to the left and they go upwards and right, I'm going to, sh I'm going to fill that in with a shade, of, uh, a shade of red that's more medium that between these two shades right here. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen again and come over here. I'm going to create a shape that goes in the direction, that goes in this direction right here, going upwards to the right. And I'm just going to make this a medium shade right like that. And I'm going to go through and create all of these shapes that go in that direction with that shade right there. Now, instead of clicking on the Bezier pen and the dropper tool over and over and over again, what I like to do is just use the keyboard shortcut. So the keyboard shortcut for the dropper tool is D and the keyboard shortcut for the Bezier pen is B. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create another shape like that. Close that back to the starting point. I'm going to press D for the dropper, and I'm going to make that the same shade as this red here since it's going upwards and to the right. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to press B to get back to the uh, dropper tool, I mean the uh, Bezier pen. And I'm going to create another shape right here. Again, press D 
to grab that selection of a color. And there's going to be these black outlines on here by default. Don't worry about that right now. Once we're done creating all these shapes, we're going to get rid of that all in, all in one shot. So all that's going to do is create even more clicks for us, which uh, this sort of design here, we have plenty of clicks as it is. So anything to save us time is really valuable. Let me go through and create another shape here, connecting these corners together. I'll do the same over here. Do the same thing over here. And again, the keyboard shortcuts B and D, just going back and forth between those two things. And like I mentioned, this could be a little tricky. You got to really kind of try to visualize where these things should go. But um, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than it seems here. Go through and create another shape right here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through and fill this all in so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do this for however long that takes. And then I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so what I've done is I've, I've gone through and I've connected all of the corners together to create shapes manually in that medium shade all of the shapes that go upwards to the right, like I was saying previously. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and create the shapes going the other way in this darker shade of red. Now while I'm doing that, I'm just going to make sure to keep an eye out for any uh, other shapes going the other direction that I missed because it's entirely possible that I missed some shapes here. I missed a few myself when I was creating the thumbnail for the video. So just keep an eye out for that in case you come across anything that you missed. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and I'll catch up with you when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see here, I've gone through and closed in the rest of the shapes here. And you can, and if you notice, it's starting to really take form, uh, the three-dimensional aspect of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of these black outlines that I was talking about previously. So to do that, let me just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to click and drag over everything. And I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on this little red X in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And that's going to get rid of any outlines that are around any object selected. And then once you click off of that, you can see we have created this isometric sort of uh, puzzle piece. I mean, maze design. Um, this isn't quite finished yet, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over everything. And I'm going to group it all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, cre going to create a duplicate of this. So I'm going to right click on this and go to duplicate and bring this over here because what I'm going to do next is going to be pretty destructive. And I want to make sure I have an original copy of this design on hand in case I want to use this just as it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this duplicated copy and I'm going to take this bottom arrow and I'm just going to click and drag that up a little bit just to give it a flatter, just to change the perspective a bit of the design. And as you can see here, this right here is the finished uh, maze design. So what I'm going to do now is if I want to make this, let's say I want to increase the depth of this, what I can do is I can right click that and go to duplicate and just stack it on top of it like that. And I can do that again. I could right, I could click and drag over both of those, right click, go to duplicate, stack them on top of each other like that. And as you can see, it increases the depth of the actual object. And I could also stack these next to each other. Let me create another duplicate here. I can stack these next to each other if I want to make the design larger. So let me right click, go to duplicate. As you saw me do there, I was using the keyboard shortcut instead. You could press control D on the keyboard to create duplicates. We could just stack them right next to each other like that. Perfect. And I'll do this one more time. Control D to duplicate, put that right there. I have to zoom in a little closer to get that. And then one more time, Control D. And as you can see here, we're starting to get sort of like a pattern type of effect from this. May have to group that together in order for that to work. Or maybe not, but I'll just leave that there as it is. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can go about creating these puzzles, uh, these maze puzzles using Inkscape. So if you haven't done so already, please consider joining the Logos by Nick mailing list in order to receive email alerts whenever a new tutorial is posted. 
Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else, and you'll never receive any kind of spam or promotional emails from me whatsoever. The only time you'll receive an email is when a new tutorial is posted, and you'll get to watch it on the Logos by Nick website without any advertisements interrupting your learning experience. So go ahead and check the link in the description if you're interested in that. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.